Native Instruments Complete Control Mark 1 versus Mark 2. What's the differences? And why are these differences so important? In fact, let's start off with by far the most obvious difference, the one that you've probably spotted already, and that is more buttons, more buttons, more buttons, and look at that, what's that over there? Oh, it's got displays, it does have displays. This is, well, it's, it's, it's probably the most important difference too. There are two displays which tell you things, and more buttons, and, and that is good, and other things too. But let me explain a bit, well, all of that before I do that. Let me show you, loosely speaking, what these displays do. As you can probably imagine, just by observing with your eyes and maybe looking at the marketing materials, you can use these screens to choose your instrument. Noting contact instruments made by a whole range of companies, not just native instruments, one of my favorite. This one here. Adoramos. Latin vocals. It's really, really good. So then you sort of just uh, sort of press it or something, and then you can sort of press buttons and make noises come out. Adoramos. Brilliant. And then using these controls, you can change some of the parameters. So you can see here, for example, Actually, can't I move right up there? You can see it says sound res Latin, some sort of form of Latin word. Reminded me of Latin at school. Anyway, you get the idea. The screen tells you information about the instrument. The parameters allow you to manipulate some of those parameters. Now, why is this important? Well, at, at, actually, it kind of depends. So let me explain why this might be good. Pretend this is the previous version, the Complete Control Mark 1. As you're twiddling the, you're, you're, twid you're pressing browser, you're twiddling the button, sort of pressing left and right, doing all, all the navigation. Now, when I'm stood over here, Looking at a wall, which doesn't tell me any information about what I'm navigating around. So what I would have had to do is sort of, sort of this. Left, left, right, right, up, down, choose, yes. Diddly, 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 diddly. Good, cool, let's, let's, try, let's try a different, different instrument. Got to look, look over here again. Diddly, 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 diddly. Oh, I need a telescope. Basically, in the previous version, almost everything you did still required actually looking at your, your computer. I mean, yes, there's the twiddly dudes, insert footage. Yes, there's the twiddly dudes to adjust some parameters. So you didn't always, always, always have to look at the computer. But basically, any time you changed instrument and did almost anything, you still had to look at the computer. Not necessarily a huge problem. It all comes down to basically where your keyboard is. If, say, your keyboard's right in front of your computer, then obviously not a problem, but then you could make the argument if you're right next to the computer anyway, why not use the mouse? My point is with the previous version, you always had to be looking at the computer, in which case the seemed a bit clunky using those buttons up top. But with this one, you can do most of what you want, most, not all, you can do most of what you want using the screens and the twiddly do with buttons and stuff. So in real terms, that's why the screens are so important. I mean, yes, it's nice to have screens. It's, it's just nice to have more buttons and lights. And believe me, I'm a huge fan of more buttons and lights. Joking aside, the nicer your gear is, the more it gets you inspired, but it does actually result in an improved workflow. So what else is new? Well, let me show you something that people tend to overlook. What's that? 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 What's that down there? What's that? What's that? Oh, what are these guys? What are these guys? What are you doing? Where did these come from? How did they get there? What are they? Physical pitch wheel and mod wheel! Physical pitch wheel and mod wheel! Now, now I know what you're thinking. People, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. People who've maybe got the uh, previous version, the Mark 1. It, it had it. Look, look, I'm gonna show you. Um, can I sort of... Well, that's kind of in focus. That's uh kind of in focus. So that, those, uh, what looks like to be some form of like futuristic toaster or something, it's actually touch strips. So let me just zoom out. There you go, touch strips. So one was a pitch wheel, one was a mod wheel. And then you sort of uh, moved, moved, moved your finger about on it to sort of make it go up and down. But, 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 now that, that sounds great. And there was definitely some 
really cool perks about that. In particular, something I will insert a bit of footage about now. Physics effects for the mod wheel. So you could take, say, a base and assign the mod wheel to be the main modulation source, then bounce this around, creating some sort of mad physics-based wobble. It was brilliant. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was a cool idea. However, however, for doing normal pitch wheel stuff and normal mod wheel stuff, it's simply not as good. It's a totally different experience. It, it, and it's, it's much, it's basically much better. Yes, it's technically sending the same information, but as an extreme example, imagine doing all your pitch wheel and mod wheel stuff using one of these encoders. You simply wouldn't be able to do it right. I'm one with the music now. That is, seriously, that, I mean, that, that's, that's just one example, but for things that require the mod wheel, maybe even it's just like opening a, a cutoff on a filter or something, and you wanna, you're sort of playing in a melody. I mean, I, I, I can't play the keyboard very well at all. If you're playing in a melody and you want to uh, sort of, sort of ride the cut off to open it and close it in a musically expressive way. It's a totally different experience. Like when you're pulling it down, it like physically wants to spring you back. So you've got that physical interaction. So you can, really hard to explain, but it's, it's a different, you end up interacting with it in a different way. It's just a touch strip. Look at that for a zoom. Look at that for a sw for smooth zoom. Look at that for a smooth zoom. What is that? Oh wait, now, now the things are going all dancey dancey. Why does that happen? Oh, weird. Anyway, more points, more information, more knowledge. Now, um, let me let me consult my notes. Oh yes, one more thing. One more thing. This isn't a general review, by the way. I will have a general review coming at some stage. This video is focusing more on Mark One versus Mark Two. Something I noticed on the scale smart play functionality. Oh, I missed, played the wrong one, that's what she said. You choose a scale such as A for Adam, since my name is Adam, and then choose, I don't know, choose, uh, it's got major, minor, harmonic minor, major pentatonic, etc. blues, maybe we go for A, blues. <laughs> oh, that would be fine. Here's what I wanted to show you. Basically, there are more scales from before. There's all of these guys, Arabic, altered, whole tone, whole half, whole pop, whole burp, so many I can't even read. Uh, main, modes, jazz, world, fight, these are all banks, so each one of these categories, look at all of these, look at all, oh, my thing's in the way, uh, look at all of those categories, and each one of those has loads in it. So you've got like world, and then you've got Hungarian minor, Hungarian major, Nepo, I'm not gonna try to say that word, Spanish, Greek, Jewish, one, Jewish, two, two, Jewish, two, it's hard word to say that. Indian, one, two, three, four, Mideast, one, two, three, four, Mideast, just like five tone, penta, 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 and loads more words. I mean, look at all of them. What even is that word? I, I've no idea. Uh, that probably shows my lack of culture. Um, anyway, there appears to be many, many, many more scales, and I'm a huge fan of non standard scales, as different scales ev evoke different emotions and things. And I need these helpers to actually play in these scales. Now, what I don't know is if you get these scales or not on the previous version. For all I know, once the update, the uh, contact software, complete, whatever it's called, software stuff. Maybe you can get all these scales on the complete control mark one. I have no idea, but at least it's something to consider. Oh, also, 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 one thing I haven't told you yet is, do you remember, oh, do you remember I said about one of my favorite things about, um, about the mark one is the touch strips and how insert footage and how you could give them physics based effects to make it bounce around and stuff. What I think you can do, maybe, maybe, I haven't figured it out yet, and this is hopefully do it. It'd be sad if it's not the case. Hopefully you can do it with the, uh, oh, look at that, oh, artistic, zoom, zoom, we're already zoomed in. Uh, let's uh, change the angle. I'm hoping you can do it with the smart strip there, right below the mod wheel and the pitch wheel. So, uh, I mean, I say, I mean, I say I hope, because to be honest, I haven't quite figured out how that works yet, but I'm, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to sort of I mean, just based on the visual feedback there, yeah, which looks fantastic, doesn't it? Look at that. Oh. oh, now it's all the lights have gone all weird again. Why does that keep happening? In reality, they don't flash like that, although that does look pretty cool. That's how they look in reality. So I'm hoping that I can get all the physics effects to bounce around there, and that'll be super rad. So then, as I say, I can assign that to do something in my serum preset or whatever. I could take the define modulation, change that to mod wheel, assign this to mod wheel, give it a physics effect, and then poof, bounce it about. That makes for a happy multiplier. So yes, there we have it, there we have it. There are probably a few more differences between the Mark I and the Mark II. In particular, you can do more with these buttons up here. 
these guys here. But to be honest, to be honest, I'm not personally as interested in them. Purely based on my own workflows, I'm sure they're very useful for some people. Get a bit closer, get a bit closer. So the uh, sorts of buttons you have, play, record. In fact, no, 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 no play, and, play and record are useful. I think it was some of the mixer functionality that I wasn't personally as bothered by. Hello, mixer button. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, thank you. Look at the buttons, look at the Look at the buttons, look at the buttons. Anyway, they are my thoughts. Oh, I've still got dust on my keyboard stand. That's embarrassing. Anyway, they are my thoughts about the main differences, in my opinion, between the Mark One and the Mark II. My name has been Multiplier, and I will catch you guys on the... on the... What's happening? Uh, Soundcloud broke. Soundcloud broke. Flippity flip. Soundcloud is useless.